it is finally time to reveal the secrets of Project XMC A1 Prototype 1. Let me show you what we're doing and what the actual thought behind all of this really is. <laughs> Here is our prototype for the first part of our overall XMC project. This is prototype one, and it's not a prototype of the final product. Like, we're not testing everything in this one prototype that we want to do. This is a very specific prototype testing one aspect of one part. Of the final XMC project that is namely these now what these are is essentially a boosterless carburetor not truly a boosterless carburetor but a Venturi booster carburetor let me explain now what we did we machined down this carburetor right down to the very bottom of the Venturi well, or should I say very top of the Venturi, right when it starts to taper out, that's where we machined it down to. Including cutting off the original boosters, the original, you know, well, straight leg boosters they were. And instead, we have now added these uh, aluminum spacers. Before that, you see this JB Weld, we had to JB Weld a, uh, underneath Oh, yeah, you get a good look right there. We had to JB weld underneath and fill that gap below where the booster um, tube came out of. Because these are essentially annular boosters. They're just bigger to fill the actual diameter of the Venturi itself. So essentially the Venturi is an annular booster. The fuel comes through here. We have a little channel, see that? We have a little channel machined into the back of these, all the way down, down to there. Now you see those little holes right there? We have four of them for now, just to test the process. This is not the final product by any stretch of the imagination. But we have four holes, discharge nozzles, essentially, there is a channel cut around the perimeter of these uh, 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 spacers. These are just wedged in here right now. There's no silicone. There's no sealant. There's no actual sealer sealing it to the carburetor right now. So that's something we got to address. They are super tight in here, though. Like, I can't hardly... I don't know if I can even... Oh, I can. Yes. That's actually good, because now I can show you... See, look at that. We have a little channel. There's our trough. We have a little channel going around the perimeter with our four holes. And that is what we have machined here. See all that? And then the fuel just rides along that uh, oh, uh, JB welded section there. And these things fit like a glove. Like I wasn't sure if I was even going to be able to. Let's make sure I line that back up get them back out okay good i wasn't sure if i was going to actually be able to show you that make sure i'm lined up then i'll press that in i need to tap it in with a hammer so that is how they function that is the idea but how does it function meaning does fuel actually get pulled out of those four annular discharge nozzles in the location they're in? A, you know, supposedly, you know, supposed to be, right? The, the entire thought behind it, right? The airspeed is the highest right at the pinch point of the Venturi. So theoretically, that would be where it would have the most responsiveness, right? Because usually, the booster is above the Venturi. Didn't make much sense to me. I figured if you want the best pull, the best response, you would put the actual booster in the Venturi. 
where the highest airspeed is, right? You know, that would make most sense to me. But does that actually work? Does this actually work? We can test that, but first we have to uh, we have to mock up a carburetor out of this. We we have to assemble some bowls on it. You know, we gotta we gotta essentially mock it up to being a functional carburetor, if only temporary. So let's slap some fuel bowls on this so we can actually fill it up with uh, a uh, well a liquid analog. We're not gonna actually flow gas through here. We'll flow uh, water. Which water is not the ideal substitute for gasoline because it's actually has a higher viscosity, uh, so it'll have a higher surface tension. But you know, is what it is. We can make that work, at least just to temporarily see. Well, I mean, does the actual theory work at all? That's what we're here to find out. Now let's assemble this bad boy up with a couple of fuel bowls and test it out. Yeah, I got my other one in here. Okay. Turn it around, slap you on. Now, we're not going to put a base plate on here. I have a base plate right here that works perfect for it. Uh, that old 750 base plate that we had uh, that the ear broke off of. That will fit on here perfectly for testing wise. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, means of testing won't really let me have that on at the moment. We're working on that. Me and Junkyard Necromancer are actually making a, uh, well, he's making. I just came up with the idea, I made him do all the hard stuff. Making a mount that I can mount this carburetor to that a uh, vacuum hose will just hook to so I can actually use the carburetor fully assembled to flow test it. But for right now, all we have is just the end of our va shop vac here. And unfortunately the end does not, uh, oh, it, it's not, the, the butterfly is getting away. So just for now, this is how we'll test it. Okay, we got her all mounted up, mocked up here. We put some water through the vent tube into the float bowl. So now all we need to do is just take our vacuum, turn it on, and see if it'll pull fuel out of the boost bowl. Yes, it does. Now you could see there was some turbulence going on here. Uh, not only that, but we do have seepage between the actual carburetor and this itself. Like I said before, we do not have any sort of sealant uh, gasket, anything like that. So we are going to have some seepage passed. That's okay for this test because we are merely testing if having the location right there will allow it to pull from the bowl, which it does, clearly. All we have to do now is just optimize that. But you could see there is turbulence up here, right? And also, I feel like... Uh, you can see the holes right there. The holes are just flush, right? They're just flush with the outside of the uh, circumference of these inserts. Now, I feel as if having it flush like that might be a detriment. We just have our hole flush with the wall. The incoming air here, which is trying to pull fuel out, might also be blocking the fuel from coming out. You gotta remember, air has its own des density. Air is solid, you know, well, I mean, not solid, but it, it's, you know, air has mass. It gets in the way of stuff. So if air is rushing by here, that could be preventing fuel from coming out here. A more optimal scenario 
would be this. We have our hole here, we have a little ledge, so the air is passing by here, the fuel is coming out without air resistance, and as soon as it hits this, it atomizes. See what I mean? Let's see if we can maybe test that. And the way we're going to test that is twofold. We are both going to try and create that ledge to see if that helps and see if we can get rid of the turbulence by, you know, having some sort of a radius entry. A more streamlined way for the air to come through that booster. We're going to do it with this. This is just a, a piece of, well, it's actual, like, sink, you know, material. Sink, uh, uh, oh, shoot. I don't remember what it's called anymore. You can never remember these things when the camera's actually on. But you, you know what it is, right? I cut it in half. Now this is one and a quarter inches diameter, which just so happens to fit right in that booster, little loosely. So what we want to do is we want to create some sort of, oh, uh, you know, wrap some tape around this, right? And we want to flare out that end. How are we going to flare out this end, you might be wondering? Why is simple, of course, with a hammer, right? Now this hammer just about fits inside this hole. So we can work that back and forth, making our hole actually round. Then we go from this hammer to this hammer. Now, unfortunately, the ball peen end goes right through. This end, however, is just ever so slightly bigger. Well, I mean, it, it's bigger by a little margin, but look, we can drive this hammer into there with this hammer and flare out this end. Just like that. Remember, I, I cut it in half. I, I had two pieces, right? I did one of them already just to see if it would work. Not too shabby by just hitting a couple of hammers together, eh? Not that you're supposed to do that, but, well, you know, radius entry. Let's give this a shot. Let's see how this affects airflow. Right there, we got our uh, tape surrounding that tape. Got our tape to bulk up the sides there, so it's a nice snug fit. We got a nice clear shot and we positioned it so let's see if you can see this maybe sort of kind of possibly ah see there's our hole it's right above our discharge discharge nozzle hole any guesses how is this going to affect what we see there ah i mean one way to find out So what did we see there? Well, we seen, you know, our turbulence problem was gone, okay? Uh, any water that came out actually went out and went down, which was good. I got one more thing to try, and let's see how this affects it. Wow, that looked really impressive in the beginning there. What in the world did I just do? Well, if you couldn't tell, I actually put the phone over the funnel and blocked it. So essentially, it was sucking, you know, you know, it was almost like putting the choke on, okay? That, that's a better way, to, better way to explain it. I essentially, I put the choke on. 
That way it had a lot more pull through those, you know, these tiny little holes. What does that tell me? I think we have way too much leakage going on uh, around this seam here. So I think the next thing we have to do is we have to actually seal this up with just a little bit of silicone, right? Right around this ring, silicone it up, punch it in there. That way it actually, you know, only pulls through the holes. We're having too much, you know, uh, uh, leakage in order for it to pull out of these holes effectively, is what I'm thinking. So we'll do that. And I believe then we'll have a more accurate uh, we'll have a more accurate idea of exactly how it's working, right? But I think so far anyway, this project is off to a really good start. Uh, the actual concept works. Oh, what lights? There we go. The actual concept works. How effective is it compared to traditional just booster strip? I have no idea. You know, it might be way worse, it might be better. But there is definitely, you know, room for improvement. And I have a few more ideas on exactly how to go about achieving that. This was just, you know, just stuff right off the top of my head. I got I got a few more I got a few more tricks up my sleeve to see exactly if we can make this oh I don't know actually something you know pretty good. Any hoozle, that's it for this video. More to come on Project XM. God, the, all the lights. I just don't. There we go. There we go. More to come on this project soon. We got to focus on the engine build, you know, well, getting the engine torn apart, rather. Uh, I haven't touched it since the last time you've seen me touch it. So, because I, I got this back from the machine shop and I wanted to play with it. So, that's what I've been doing. Anyways, catch you later. Catch you next time. Mm -hmm.